This video is all about time to hunt. How much damage does it do? Is it good? Is it better than Peacemaker? What builds can I make with it? How cheap is it? All of your questions will be answered. Let's get into it. Let me just start this off by saying Gunslinger was my first tune that I made on this game. And originally I was Peacemaker up until Vicus. And I started to just feel like I was getting bored of the class. I felt like there was so much to do. It was almost overwhelming. I was switching between three weapons. and But really, the what I wanted to be doing was doing huge damage with my rifle skills because she's got this big-ass rifle and it's like, douche, douche, douche. You know, and you're like doing all these six skills. You're like zooming in, scoping from like target down. It's crazy, right? Like, I love those skills. And that's why I decided to switch to Time to Hunt and try it out. And I just made a simple 4x3 build. And I was like, holy hell, this is it. This is the one for me. And then it just kind of went from there. And now I'm 1540 on my Gunslinger. As you can see, it's not technically my main. My main is my Glavier, as many of you probably know. I hold her dear to my heart, but my Gunslinger, it's like my two mains. These are my two favorite classes without a doubt. I juice both of them, uh, so I really, really enjoy playing this class. I've had a ton of experience playing it since the release for this last year, and I am super hyped to tell you all about it. So, is the damage good? I believe so, yes. And the good part about this is that it does not matter which build you go for, which we'll talk about the builds in just a second, but the damage is really, really solid. And if you have high uptime on your rifle skills and your bullet rain skill, it's a no brainer. You're going to be on the MVP screen. Are you gonna be Cruel Fighter, the main MVP every time? Maybe, maybe not. It depends on everything that's going on in the raid. There are so many viable build options. For example, spec crit. Full spec, a little bit of crit on the necklace, and you're gonna be running Salvation Set with this, and you are going to see the highest damage numbers with your rifle skills here, but you're also gonna be seeing the highest downtime in between those skills. And you're kind of just running around like an igniter sorceress. The next most popular build for this class is gonna be full spec swiftness. And with this, you're gonna just run swiftness on your necklace, but you're gonna run the hallucination set because you need that crit, okay? You gotta have the crit because if you're not critting your rifle skills, then your damage is gonna be kinda poo-poo, of and it's just not gonna be fun. Like, you wanna see the yellow numbers, big damn yellow numbers, right? You wanna see them. So this is the next popular build, and it gives you a little bit more mobility, feels a little bit better for sure, and your cooldown times on your skills are a little bit less, so you feel a little bit more active during the fight. The next build that you can run is a full swiftness spec build. Again, you're gonna run Hallucination, or you can run Dominion. I've never tried running it with Dominion. I did try it for a little bit, running it with Hallucination. And the thing about that build is that your swiftness is so high, oftentimes you will run into diminishing returns because you'll have your rifle skills up, but the boss is doing something, or you have to you know, dodge a mechanic, or something like that, and then guess what? Now you've lost five or six seconds that you could have used the skill and it'd be on downtime again. So you do lose damage in that way for sure, but you have way more utility. You're gonna be way more active in the fight as far as stagger and things like that are concerned. Um, and you're gonna be flying around the map, obviously, but it is true to his name. It is a piano build. You are always gonna be moving around, flying around, zip, dodge, duck and dive in, all kinds of stuff like that. So if you like that type of play style, you like having carpal tunnel, then definitely that builds for you. Now, as far as my build is concerned, I think I have the ultimate Giga Chad build. To be honest, I just love this freaking build. It is a perfect blend, I feel like, especially with doing the Legion raids, Chaos Dungeons, just boss rushes, everything. My build is a 1400 spec, 800 swift. So you just have swift on one of your accessories. Ideally, you would have a big time bracelet with swiftness, maybe like 80 plus, and then a really good ring with swiftness and the rest of its spec. So you're gonna have about 1500 spec and you'll have like 750 to 800 swift. That's like a really good sweet spot. The coolest thing about this build is that while yes, your swiftness is a little bit higher, moving around the map feels much better. Your cooldown times aren't so short that you're running into diminishing returns. 
and oftentimes it's like the perfect rotation for so many of these mechanics that are happening in Brel, in Vicus, and in Vaulton. And so even with a full rotation, your after you go through all of your rifle skills, you only have like four or five seconds until this is up again. So that way there's a little bit of time between your major rotation of damaging skills to do mechs or whatever it may be. So this is what I have found to be the build that I really enjoy. And I think that it does huge, huge damage um, alongside feeling super good to play in all areas. So which one is gonna do the most damage? I know that that's what y'all wanna know. If you've learned anything or you've been liking the video so far, make sure to hit that like button for me. It's free and it helps me out so much. One of my biggest goals is to get 2,500 subscribers by the end of the year and you would really be helping me out with liking this video or subscribing to my channel. And it's gonna help to spread the love of time to hunt gunslingers everywhere. And here's the answer. Any of the builds that focus more on spec, you're going to be doing about the exact same damage. In fact, I actually did a test with all of these builds with Lost Wing Cliff. I was doing about 4.8 million in around a minute to a minute and five seconds. This is without an awakening. This is just doing skills and doing normal rotations. All of them were right about 4.8 something million for the full swiftness. It was, all, it was about 4.6 million. However, that is not going to be reflective in a raid because of all of the diminishing returns you are going to experience by having to do mechs, having to dodge attacks, having to go around and collect orbs and gate five brel, all of those types of things that you're gonna have to do that really diminishes your damage, uptime, downtime, and what's going on within the fight, okay? So if you're trying to be on the MVP screen, if you're trying to do the maximum amount of damage possible, I would not build the swiftness build. However, it's probably one of the cheapest ones to build. You are going to likely destroy your fingers, your wrists, have carpal tunnel, and you're not even gonna be on the MVP screen. So is it really worth it? I don't know. That's a question you're gonna have to ask yourself in the mirror. Is time to hunt better than Peacemaker? This is extremely subjective. In my opinion, yes. Why? Because it's much more chill, you see bigger rifle damage, and it is more in line with what I feel like a gunslinger would be. And that's just doing huge, huge rifle damage and being like super nimble, skating around, doing all this crazy stuff, right? In my opinion, having the shotgun skills, it's nice, but having to go close range and long range and then moving around like too much like that i felt like why don't i just play a melee class honestly that does huge damage like why don't i just play a striker why don't i just play a dead eye or something like that right now the biggest downside of time to hunt is your lack of stagger compared to peacemaker with that being said do i even notice it now no, absolutely not. Do not worry about that aspect. Once you get used to the class, you'll be able to hold on to certain skills and know when to use them or not to use them so you have plenty of team stagger. In terms of engravings, the build that is almost purely universal for this class is going to be Grudge, King Blunt, Time to Hunt, Hitmaster, all three, Adrenaline 2, Peacemaker 1. The reason you run Peacemaker 1 is because your rifle skills get 10% additional damage. That's huge. That's usually like a level two engraving. If you put Cursed All, that's attack power plus 8% at level two. So Peacemaker's plus 10 for your rifle skills, and where's all of our damage? Rifle skills, plus after the boss or the enemy is below 50%, it gives an additional 10%. And this is why we run Peacemaker 1. But this is also the reason that this build can get a little tricky to make. And all of your accessories are going to be super cheap, except that Peacemaker 5 accessory. As you can see, I've just made a little bit of a mock build here. And these pieces are pretty decent, um, very cheap, right? You're looking at like 10K right here. This is 11, 11K for these four pieces. Now the last piece, lots of times you have to finagle 
what engraving is going to be on that Peacemaker 5 other than the Peacemaker. So it might be Grudge, it might be King Blunt, it might be Hitmaster. But what about the engraving book? So right now, I don't know why people are paying $2,700 don't do this okay one of the biggest reasons i wanted to make some of these build videos including this one is because the golden frog is going to be here for the next four freaking weeks man this is the time to make your builds this is the time to get your books make sure and buy your books on wednesday on reset day when everyone's buying the legendary engraving book packs from the frog and they're opening them they're putting them on the action house wait until it goes down and don't buy like five or ten at a time you know buy one or two at a time then you know let it come down a little bit buy another one, let it come down a little bit, buy another one, so that you're always buying it at a low rate. That way you can save the most gold possible when making this build. If you're looking at like 30K or a little bit less than 30K. So somewhere between 20 to 30K for the books. And for these accessories, you're looking at around 10K, 11K. So you're you're up to about 40, 40,000 or so gold. And then that last piece, the Peacemaker accessory. This is the one that's really gonna be a toss up. And what I would do is I would wait for that piece first. Try to find the cheapest one that you can get and then go and build the rest of your build because all the rest of these accessories are super generic. And then you can go with a gold ring um, for your time to hunt accessories. So that's gonna be super cheap as well. And, or you can go for relic. You can do that instead. If you wanna spin the gold, that's fine. I do have time to hunt 12, grudge 12, and an eight six stone which allows me to have four up here on Keen Blunt. So it does depend on your stone as well. But even the five, three versions of this necklace, I think we're only like five to 10K more um, for a high green quality. So you're still having good stats even with that. So it is or can be super expensive to build this, but it can also be really cheap. As far as your gems are concerned, you're going to be having damage and cooldown gems on all four of your rifle skills. And then you're also gonna be having damage and cooldown on bullet rain and only damage on meteor stream. Now, as far as the tripods go, these are pretty much fixed. There are a couple of options depending on the situation, your play style, whatever it may be, but these are pretty much fixed. So for perfect shot, you're gonna be using Gale Wind and either Bleed Effect or Stable Stance. I like Stable Stance because there's a lot of chaos going on in Brel, um, in Gate 5 and Gate 6, and I really don't ha like having the skill interrupted. I wanna be able to get the damage out. Um, of course, it doesn't have push immunity, but it does have paralysis immunity. So you're not gonna be getting interrupted by her normal attacks, um, but you will still get hit off the map if she's like slinging her arms and you're in the yellow area and you don't wanna get hit off the map. So do not use this, that is not push immunity, but it does protect against like normal skills. And then you're gonna use kill confirmation and enhanced shot. As far as target down is concerned, again, Gale Wind here, then quick aim, large magazine, and steady aim. For catastrophe, you are going to use overwhelm room. We gotta have stagger somewhere. And then you're gonna use most likely tenacity. You can use range aim or quick aim. I really like having tenacity because this does grant push immunity. I cannot tell you how many times I've had to use this skill when I already used my movement skill. And like Brel is about to use her knockback attacks and gonna knock me off the damn map. And I use this skill and I'm good to go or something like that. So it is very, very useful to have this skill in the bag and that be an extra function of it. Then you're gonna use Cutthroat and then the next tripod is also, again, up to your choice. Uh, for, so Eternal Calamity, this one is overall going to do more damage if the boss is not moving out or moving around because what happens is your initial claymore is going to explode and then it's going to explode three more times after that. But carpet bombing, what's gonna happen is that you're going to throw two claymores up in the air, shoot them both at the same time, boom, it explodes, it does damage. But overall, this will do more damage. It's just a little bit of it is over time instead of immediately. So again, a preference here. You're not gonna be losing out on too much damage either way. Um, so it's really just your preference. But this one does do more stagger. So again, this is a huge stagger skill for you as a time to hunt player. So I like using this. Um, for the extra stagger as well as the extra damage possibility. For focus shot, Gale Wind again, and you're gonna be using quick aim or change of direction. You can use either one. I really like quick aim because I know the fights now um, and I know when mechanics are, are gonna happen and how long they're gonna be and all that kind of stuff. So if you're learning a fight, 
change of direction can be very useful so you can modify your aim slightly just in case the boss is moving around a little bit um, but typically you're going to use quick aim and then double tap and final strike now for spiral tracker i put my bleed rune on spiral tracker there are a couple of options to put your bleed rune on but for me and what and how i move around the map and how i play this class bleed on spiral tracker made the most sense so i use it on that and of course you're going to put weakness exposure here and then bullet rain you're going to run in a tight spot rapid fire and flame shot and you don't really need any runes on bullet rain for plasma shot i have my judgment rune on here and i use quick shot because i like to use the skill and then keep moving uh, sometimes it, it seems like if you don't use this tripod it just takes forever to get that freaking bullet out so i use quick shot and it feels much better that way uh, for peacekeeper this is a must you have to use excellent mobility if you don't you literally have to be kissing the boss to counter them uh, instead of being able to slide up towards them and counter them with this tripod so you've got to be using this tripod with quick step you are going to use life absorption because having and setting up your focus shot and target down to use this skill with is very very good it's very useful and it gets you in and out of those skills much quicker so this is also a must for dextra shot i use weakness exposure and excellent mobility i like having this as a mobility skill sometimes it's freaking sick like dude you 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 move with this skill it's awesome um, so of course also you need the weakness exposure to keep your crit rate up as well and i use conviction on this skill for media stream i use weak point detection piercing explosion and you can either do bombardment support or you can do meteor fall this is kind of the same situation as catastrophe was but with meteor stream your meteor fall is only going to have one bullet coming down or one meteor coming down and then your bombardment support is going to have three so it's going to go boom 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 and you have a little bit more damage potential for sure with bombardment support and that's why i use it um, and i don't feel like it's a skill that ever hinders me plus it also gives more stagger so again you're using this skill a lot for stagger or if you don't have any other skills up you can use it too um, but its main use is going to be stagger as well as catastrophe those are the side uses of these skills so that's why i have both of these options for them so i can maximize the amount of stagger that i'm getting from them now for me i use somersault shot here and i use agile movement uh, and this really makes the class feel good this is such a good balance of overall fun damage and playability and i'm if everyone that is playing is about the same level they have the same gems or ish somewhere in that area i'm always on the mvp screen or the mvp if you have a high uptime with this class with the rifle skills you are going to be on the mvp screen all the time that's just the way it is in my opinion this build for me is without a doubt my favorite version and i've played three of them this is my th three of them i've played this is my third version of the build and i very much love this one i will be sticking to it for a long time so if you are even thinking about trying time to hunt out after watching this video let me know tell me which build you're gonna make and if you're gonna take advantage of the golden frog that's here for the next four weeks and buy those freaking books and then maybe you can buy the accessories after it's gone because you need some of that gold to be buying all those mats that he's providing all the juicy mats oh my god we're getting juice boys anyways let me know what time to hunt build you're thinking about going with or if you have any other questions or concerns about the build or the class in general let me know down in the comments i would love to hear from you and i would love to be able to help you in any way that i can with the build but guys i'm gonna see you on the next video and if you liked this video make sure and hit that like button Subscribe to my channel if you feel like doing that as well. Hitting that like button helps me reach more people and spread this time to hunt love. And if you want to subscribe to the channel as well, that is fantastic too because there is more Lost Ark content on the way.